freezing cold in Manchester, UK. Stood at the um, car park bus stop, getting ready to go to the airport to check in for my flight to Newark um, in New Jersey slash New York. Going out there to do some customer work. Uh, looking forward to it. This is the weather right now in the UK, snowing. So hopefully it's slightly better when I get um, to the US. So I've arrived in uh, Newark, just outside Newark Airport. My uh, taxi's here, so I will get back in a minute. Hey everybody, Kelvin here. And we're now approaching five past six in the evening in the US Eastern Time, which is, uh, well, I'm in New Jersey. The time back in the UK for me would be five past 11 now. So I've got to imagine that I've been up since, time do I get up? Since about five o'clock, 5 a.m. And you know, I'm still up now because I'm operating on US time. So I'm just chilling in my hotel, just trying to prepare what I need to prepare for tomorrow. Going on customer site to start um, deploying configurations, etc. Basically, what I've come here to do. Um, I'm very tired, but I'm going to go downstairs soon and catch up with some of my other teammates, uh, colleagues from, from Cisco in different teams that have been out here about a week now, I believe, um, doing the, or working on the customer site, which I'm joining now. So I'll catch up with them and um, hopefully get up to speed for tomorrow. So yeah, that's it. Travelling all day. That's sometimes what you do as a engineer or consultant if you like. And you know, depending on who you work for, you'll find yourself travelling um to different countries. So I yeah, I'm in I'm in the US right now from the UK, so you know, um, sometimes you can be on these long journeys. So it's best to prepare as much as you can before you actually, you know, take them journeys. I.e. what I need to do, hopefully, I've prepared enough to um, get started tomorrow. I mean, even though it's tired, I mean, even though it's tiresome, the, the, the journey, the travelling, it's quite exciting because you get to travel, you get to visit different places and, you know, meet other guys, um, you know, meet your other colleagues that are part of, you know, the, the wider organisation within Cisco. So that's quite cool as well. And, you, you know, like I say, you get to explore different parts of the world, which I think is quite cool and I really enjoy doing that. So yeah, I might do another vlog before this evening's out, but if not, I will catch up with you guys tomorrow for day two. Um, I didn't actually, at the start of this vlog, I didn't actually say how long I'm going to be in the US for, so I might as well cover that now. So I'm going to be over here for approximately two weeks. So that's enough time for me to hopefully give you guys an insight into what my life's been like as an engineer traveling and um, you know working on customer site and taking on new challenges. And um, yeah, just catch a bit of my life and a typical day as a network security solutions consultant in Cisco. So I'll catch up with you soon guys. 
Good morning, everybody. Just finishing my breakfast, my first day on the job in the US. Sat in my hotel, um, about to go get my stuff and then set off to customer site to carry out the work that I need to do. So, first night, as I said yesterday, the time zone is slightly different uh, for, for me. So, it's five hours behind here in the New Jersey compared to the UK so I don't think I actually slept as bad um, I was up at about I did wake up about 3am this morning then tried to get back to sleep as I knew you know, what my time to wake up yeah and um, I get my sleep routine in order as I am here for two weeks so I'm just about to uh, go get my laptop and stuff, make sure I'm ready, set off the customer site. So I shall catch up later and let you know how the first day went. Morning everybody. Day, well, day two properly into being here in the US working. Yesterday I had quite a productive day. Unfortunately I didn't blog or vlog. Uh, last night, the reason being is because we went out for a meal with the guys that are here. So by the time I got back, it was quite late, um, and yeah, that's the reason why I didn't I didn't vlog. But I'll give you a quick update today. So some of you might have seen yesterday a uh, few posts that I posted on my Instagram. If you're not following on me, uh, following me on there, it's at I Wiz Kid with two eyes um, on the Wiz and the Kid bit. So check me out on there. I basically shared some photos online of a data center that I'm currently working in over here, and um, this is actually going to be my environment for the next few weeks while I do what I've got to do there lots of cool kit in there um obviously all cisco kit <clears throat> i'm working on some cool kit some security products that cisco has and yeah kind of spent all day in the data center configuring devices yeah so some of you might ask well what's what's that like you know uh, i think one guy posted on my post on Instagram saying that you know it looked like uh, heaven and yes you know if you love the technology like I do you know it's it's a nice place to be you know you get to look at all the equipment you get to configure obviously the the equipment at least what you're sent there to do um, <clears throat> but one thing to bear in mind is that it's quite loud on the DC floor, you know, you've got all the equipment running, all the fans, you know, it's um, a loud environment. If you are looking at going on the data center floor <clears throat> and you've not done it yet, you know, do bear that in mind um, and take some sort of ear defenders if the data center doesn't have any. Um, but yeah, aside from that, very productive there working with my uh, colleagues, some from the US and, and some from the UK, <clears throat> configuring devices and um, it was quite cool for me because before I come out here to the US I, um, I did a lot of prep work in the UK so I was using uh, Ansible to, so Ansible automation to generate configurations um, that I need to apply and um, you know now I'm seeing just how important using Ansible was, um, because you know if there's a change on you know one of the uh, configs for one of the devices, and you know you've got similar devices sharing the same configuration, um, you know it's a lot easier to rectify that issue. 
um, using Ansible than having to do it manually going through each device one by one. You know, it saves a lot of time. So um, yeah, Ansible's really helped, and you know, it's it's also given me an opportunity to learn mm. Ansible automation as well. So really enjoying it. So today, same thing, probably again. Um, I think, yeah, I think I'll be there all day again. Um, so I'll try and catch up with you guys at the back end of today and um, fill you in on, on how it went. But until then, see you soon. What's up, guys? Kelvin here, and I'm now on the weekend of my visit to the US. I didn't do a vlog yesterday evening because I'm quite tired and I'm quite busy at the data center, but um, it was it was quite a good day. So today I'm just spending time going to New York City. I'm gonna see some of the sites and hopefully not get lost. So when I get back, I'll update you guys on more about the data center and how it went. But until then, speak to you soon. Amazing place. It's like the movies. Massive buildings. And if I'll start down there, so I'm gonna go down there. The buildings are just amazing. People from all over the world. What's up everybody, Kelvin here, checking in, um, I can't remember if I, I checked in yesterday morning as I was on my way to New York, spent the whole day in New York so I took, took the Saturday off work and um, I explored New York, did quite a lot actually, went to, well spent my time really in downtown Manhattan and for those that follow me on Instagram you probably see me posting quite a few photos and videos of me in Manhattan which you know was a really cool adventure for me really enjoyed it and at the start of the morning I said that I would talk about what I've been up to in the data centre um, just kind of giving you guys an insight as to how things have been going on and developments etc more work related really so that's what I wanted to do because that's really the focus of me vlogging my um, well this journey um, you know traveling as a as a consultant for Cisco and um, you know working in different countries etc to kind of give those that have not experienced that yet an insight into what you may encounter when and if you do embark on such journey so 
Yeah, up until Friday, the data centre deployment that I've been doing has been quite straightforward. Um, and the reason being is because I prepared a lot of things, configuration, etc., before I actually came to the US to the data centre. So it's made my life a lot easier. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I have run into a few minor issues. Those issues mainly relate to configuration um, and a device that actually came which wasn't working. So we've had to request another device through Cisco. So that's kind of put things back a little bit for only one device. So it's not it's not a big issue actually. Um, that's what we encountered um, up until so I, I actually went into work today Sunday today um, and that's that's another thing sometimes you may be required to actually work the weekend um, so you know bear that in mind you can well at least you, you know as long as you've got your fair share days off you know you, you could be could be asked to work the weekend which is all well and good so we're working today on the data center floor just going through um, my own personal checklist that i've put together um, for the devices that i'm currently configuring and deploying and yeah i've just been rectifying a few issues uh, minor issues and I started to do connectivity tests um, with devices upstream and downstream to the devices that I've deployed um, so yeah everything went pretty smooth so the upstream and downstream devices um, have not been deployed by me you know the separate set of guys um, that are doing that some colleagues of mine from Routing and switching, and I think data center actually that are um, deploying those. So it's quite interesting that how we've actually come together with, you know, configurations to make devices. You know, we've all worked on our own configurations, and now we're kind of seeing, you know, what what works and uh, what don't. But hopefully, you know, with with the right planning that we've had in place, this should be. Uh, there shouldn't be too many, too many issues, if any at all. So, um, the testing that I did so far today was quite good. Um, no, no real issues. So that's good. Um, that's a, you know, that's another thing. You know, it's. So I'm responsible for over ten devices. Uh, security appliances so I'm working on firepower devices at the minute and it's quite important that you prepare as much as you can before you actually go to the data centre to make your life easier and everybody else's life easier the main, the main aim at the minute is to get um, all the configurations in place and um, be able to connect via you know SSH for remote management, etc. So that's kind of what we're working on at the minute. Um, and obviously, we're working towards a deadline. So it took me about uh, it took me about three days actually to deploy um, over ten. Yeah, so it took me about three days, four, let's say three to four days to actually de deploy all the configurations for about 14 devices. Now that, that is considering also all the changes that were required, um, you know, things, small changes like device names, etc. And you might think, well, wow, that's, you know, quite quick for, you know, all our devices. Well, the only thing that made it that quick for me was um, because I've been using Ansible automation so any change that has been coming up in my configurations I have been able to make a simple change on my template and rerun a playbook and generate the new configuration so it's 
saved me quite a lot of time and it's definitely the way forward in the future and saves so much time. So yeah, it took me about four days, let's say in all, to make sure that everything's right. And now I have about another week to ensure all the configurations to upstream and downstream devices are correct on, on my side. Um, all the configurations are in place and then I will do um, testing, so I will do an RFU testing, so network ready for use testing for the rest of the week to ensure that the configurations and um, tests that I perform are actually um, correct. So that's what's going to happen the rest of the week. I've got obviously guys from other teams within Cisco that are, you know, working on their side of things. So if we'll kind of work together to make sure that any issues are rectified, uh, if any. And um, yeah, hopefully by the end of the week, everything is in place and configured. So I'll try to catch up with you guys again um, tomorrow or through the week. So. If you've got any questions, feel free to um, reach out to me at this point. Uh, one thing that I would mention is that when you're doing this sort of job, so when you're traveling, and especially in different time zones, you need to take into consideration any other projects that you may be working on um, in your original time zone or any training that you might have in place. So at the minute I've actually got um, other projects coming up in, in the UK and also uh, training that's taking place in the UK. And because I'm in the US, which is five hours behind the UK, um, some of my meetings are actually scheduled for like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning. So. If you can, you need to be able to manage your meetings and kind of take those into consideration is what I'm saying, I guess. Um, so, yeah, that's one thing to kind of know if you're new to, new to this. So, yeah, like I said, I'll try to catch up uh, back end of the week. And if you have any questions, just drop me a line. So, nearly at the end of my journey in the US um, on a DC deployment for a customer. I'm actually in the data center now, and as you can probably tell, it's fairly loud in here. Hopefully you can hear me on this video. I wanted to uh, do this video so you could actually see and hear what it's like in a live data center environment. and. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty loud, so you know, you could loads of equipment running, and you know, that's just how it is. So, yeah, quite loud, you get used to it after a while. So, hopefully, if this is what you want me to do, then you'll, you'll pretty much enjoy this, this scenario uh, being, you know, being placed in a, in a data center environment like this. So I'm going to do a video when I get back to the hotel, but I just wanted to do a quick one just to kind of show you guys how loud it is in the data center. What's up guys, Kelvin here. I have reached the last day of my pretty much two weeks there in the US, in New Jersey. If you've been following my videos from the start, you probably know why I'm out here. The reason being is because I'm on customer site. Um, so I'm in a data, well, I've been in a data center deploying new um, security, Cisco security solutions, which has been quite a fun experience, actually a lot to do, but I've managed to, I believe, complete everything that I needed to do. Um, it's been, there's been, there's been a lot of work, 
Uh, I think I've had one day off in nearly two weeks. I've been putting in a lot of hours, so you know, um, you know, we're talking four four a.m. in the morning to seven p.m. in the evening. So it's been a lot of hours, and that's because I've had meetings that and, and training that's been on UK time. So I've I've had to get up at six a.m., four a.m. in the morning to join those meetings. I've had uh, early starts in the data centre in order to uh, get tasks done, and I believe. You know the 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 early starts have you know kind of helped me get everything. I believe everything done that I needed to do um, as part of my assignment out here. So yeah, it's been long hours, but it's been good, enjoyable. You've probably seen if you're following um, following me on Instagram, you've probably seen um, some of the nice pieces of equipment that I've been working on in the data center. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's been fun. So I'll go back to the beginning. The re the the real reason for actually doing these little vlogs were to give those that follow me and are subscribed to me on my um, on my blog, synat.co.uk, subscribe to me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. An idea into what it's like um, being a consultant and you know traveling traveling about and and you know working on customer site so I hope it's been a good insight for you guys I hope I've kind of give give you guys some information that you didn't know about or didn't take into consideration ie uh, you know, traveling and adjusting to time zones, and you know, working early to to attend meetings, etc. Um, how loud the environments can be in the data centers is is another thing to consider. Um, and I, I also want to kind of speak a little bit about the the actual environment and the, the tasks that you may be set to do. So it's always important that you obviously know what you are doing. You know, at the end of the day as a consultant, you're working for the customer, you're representing the, the company that you work for. So it's always important that you do know what you are doing, you feel confident in what you are doing, and you never deploy or configure something that you're unsure of because you can end up with big problems going forward. Um, and yeah, I'd also take into consideration that sometimes, you know, you might not always be working with somebody else. Um, so, you know, sometimes on the roads, you may be traveling by yourself. You may meet other team members where you're going, but then in other uh, situations it might be just you you know so if you are quite an outgoing person and like to have company then you know sometimes you might struggle with actually being alone but if you're quite a reserved person or don't really mind whether you're with somebody or not it's not really a big problem you know you don't mind going out to eat by yourself you know you don't mind Going to the site and navigating around the, you know the 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 country that you're in. You know if it's especially if it's a country that you, you're not used to. Um, you know, so you, you almost need to be quite independent as well, and um, have some common sense about you as well. Is what I would say. Um, is there anything else? Yeah, I'd probably say especially when you're working on a data center floor, you know, always keep security in mind, you know, always be uh, aware of your surroundings, um, aware of what you're doing. 
You know, sometimes, especially if you're in a staging envir environment, there may be other companies, other people around, and this, um, you know, I was taking into consideration, you know, leaving your equipment, uh, i.e. laptops, um, SFPs, or, you know, anything, I was taking into consideration leaving that stuff around. I mean, normally data centres are okay. You know, you've got cameras everywhere and only authorised personnel are allowed in, etc., etc. But, you know, you just never know. Um, and another thing I'd say is also make sure that you have all the equipment necessary on the data centre floor to, to carry out, you, you know, what you need to do. Um, it's worth doing a little bit of kind of uh, research before you get to a data centre to find out whether the especially if it's in a staging environment, find out whether they have um, internet connectivity for, for guests so that you can, you know, obviously access the internet, more so company um, resources if, if needs be. And if not, then, you know, make sure that you've got all your configurations, etc. stored offline, ready for you to carry out your job when you get to site. Also make sure that you've got all the equipment that you need, so i.e. Ethernet cables, I travel with Ethernet cables, I travel with um, console cables, I travel with, I travel with you know, um, uh, you know, work, um, laptop, etc. So always make sure that you have all the equipment that's going to be needed in order to um, carry out your job, your role. And yeah, I'd say last but not least, you know, if there's issues or if you run into something you're not sure of, I mean, you've always or you should always have a team to, you know, at least guide or give you information. Or there's always online documentation, official documentation from whichever vendor you're working with. Um, obviously, me working with Cisco, um, I, you know. You, there's a lot of documentation online in regards to Cisco equipment, etc. So, you know, always make sure that you know where your resources are, I would say. And that's it. I think I've tried to at least cover at least the things that people may not take into consideration when they're looking to carry out this job or you know become a consultant slash engineer um, if there's anything else that you want to know please do drop me a comment um, on on Twitter Instagram on the blog on my YouTube channel I'll be happy to try and answer any questions that um, I may have missed or not considered but I hope you've enjoyed watching these mini vlogs I hope it's give you a good idea of, of what it can be like um, being a consultant slash engineer traveling um, and yeah like I say any more questions just drop me drop me a line I'd be happy to answer and thanks for watching <laughs>